Hey everybody, so it's been a little bit of time since I've done an update on how the van build is going. Um, I think last time I did one of these, I just gotten the floor in along with like the insulation and most of like the peripheral wiring. So I thought it'd be a good time to kind of cover what else has been going on. And as you see, the uh, driver's side of the van is getting pretty close to being finished. Um, there's a few things left to do. Like I've still got this electrical compartment open because I got to get my air conditioner charged, which is why I've got my gauges hooked up to it right now. Um, I've got to get all these drawer fronts on, but I'm going to kind of save that for the end so I don't accidentally ding something as I'm pushing my kitchen in and out of here. Um, but yeah, this side of the van is really coming along great. Oh yeah, obviously I got to get my bed in here, but I'm going to leave that out too just to have room to move around. But uh, it's really coming along well, so I thought it'd be fun to do a maybe just a two or maybe three just brief videos covering some of the stuff that's happened. Um, these are going to be brief. They're not going to be like comprehensive instructional videos. Um, there I say they're going to be more like inspirational. So maybe just some good ideas that you may want to implement in your own van as you're building them. Um, you know, quick tips and tricks or just kind of like techniques and philosophies that I feel like took me a while to learn and that I think are make my work unique. All right. And as it seems, I can't stop talking about electrical stuff. Uh, today, we're going to mainly focus on what's going on in this cabinet here along with some of these components up on the wall here um, and just some general kind of wiring philosophies that I try to implement to uh, have a nice durable product that is also easy for a customer or me to interact with. Just to quickly kind of give you a layout, um, on the outside of the box, this is actually the grill to my subwoofer. This is a cooling fan that we'll talk about in a little bit. This is kind of my electrical panel that I or a customer would interact with to kind of, you got all your breakers, your fuses, your main disconnect. Um, and then inside, we've got all our Victron components. How is underneath this panel is the battery. Here we've got our Multi Plus actually being installed on its side. And then this is actually the compressor for the air conditioner, but we are uh, not talking about that today. And then let's just give a quick overview of what we got going on on the wall over here, as well as a couple of small things over here. Um, looking at this kind of light bar, I'll do a little bit about this, I think in a future video, but I've got my Servo GX on it there couple USB ports. This is going to be an AC outlet that needs to be wired. We got a reading light and a speaker. This is a light. And then over here, we've got our stereo and our multi-plus control. Another reading light, another speaker. Then we've got the S-bar heater control. We've got our thermostat for our air conditioner. We've got a power switch for our air conditioner. And then we've got the control for our ceiling fan. So these kind of things are stuff that I would say every day you're in the van you're going to be interacting with. So behind this cover, I've got kind of some like secondary amenities that I'm not going to be interacting with very much and I think they just kind of look like an eyesore. So I like to kind of tuck things like that out of sight. So if we fold this down, we've got just this little cavity here. This is a power switch for our red, green, and blue lights and the remote to control them. And then this actually has kind of like this power source for those red, green, and blue lights. And that's controlled by this. This is a knob for my subwoofer control. And then I've just got some kind of general power switches. This is for my battery and water heaters. This is for my ceiling fan, for my fridge, and then for my S-bar heater. And those things are stuff that I do not, I just know I'm not gonna be using every day, haven't been in vans quite a while. And I'll eventually put decals on these so they look a little less black and ominous, but we'll come back and talk about this later in the video. So one of the main wiring principles that I've sort of migrated towards in all the wiring I do is I try to just now imitate what I see the car manufacturers do. And what I mean by that is early on when I started, um, I feel like I would use this like duplex uh, marine wire that had its own sheathing. But now when I look at the way that like Mercedes or Ford has done their van, what I see them do is that they use a lot of attachment points to try to minimize any sort of movement and make sure that the wiring cannot vibrate around any sort of edges. So there's tons of mounting locations and all of their wiring bundles are wrapped in something called friction tape. All right, so when I look inside my electrical compartments, there's people on the internet that make almost these like art piece electrical installations. Everything is just laid out beautifully. And there was a time in my life when I really did strive for that. But now I just kind of try to be practical about what I need to happen. And that is, I never want to look in here again. So my goals are to essentially make things as robust as possible. Like this bundle, kind of looks like a mess. Some of that is added because I've got a little temperature sensor we'll talk about here later. Um, but as you can see, this is just rigid. None of these wires can try to shape each other. I've got things like, you know, just a little bit of 
wiring loom here to prevent any kind of abrasion around here, but everything is just kind of, everything is fixed. There is no chance for stuff to be kind of flopping around. Um, when I was running my wiring through my walls, as you see, I basically first put some zip ties along the wall. I run all my wires along it. And then once I'm sure I've got kind of all my uh, kind of wiring drops and everything figured out, I go back through and I tape the whole thing using friction tape. It essentially looks very close to what the factory wiring looks like. And to me, you know, if this is what the car manufacturers are doing, then this is a good way to go. All right, speaking of friction tape, I'd like to just quickly go over some options and what's my favorite. Um, this is just a remnant of something that I actually bought off of MacMaster just to try theirs out. Uh, looking very similar to it is actually this 3M product. Um, they actually look very close to identical. Uh, however, the McMaster stuff has a very pleasant smell, I would say. Anyways, my favorite kind is actually this stuff by Tessa. Um, the advantage I find is that the outside is not nearly as tacky as either of these two. This one has a little bit of tack. This one just feels like a cloth. And the reason I prefer this is that they both do a great job of kind of holding the wire bundle together and keeping it from abrading. But if you've got to pull your wire bundle through any sort of constriction or like behind the wall panel, crap, I should have not put that in the sawdust there. Um, this stuff will actually slide through versus this, which can make a real jam with all that friction that it's developing. So anyways, that's just three options there. Um, I'll link this stuff in the description. It's surprisingly cheap. I usually probably go through three or four rolls per van I build out, um, but I absolutely love this stuff. So can't recommend it enough, Tessa. All right. Then the next thing I strive for in my installations is to essentially be as compact as possible while still being serviceable. And what I mean by that is if we pull this hose away from here, this is a heater duct, um, we can see that this thing is kind of buried in here. But you know, if I had an hour of time, I can unconnect this multi plus and I can wrestle it out of here. All these components, I can slide my battery out through this front hatch if I undo it. But it is as compact as possible. If it came down to it, I can still pull those things. Is it as easy as a big open enclosure? No, but I mean, the reality is if you've got a failure of one of these major components, that's a headache anyways. So to me saying, oh, well, I can change mine a lot faster. That's just something I wish to never face. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to be out camping and be with one of these components. Another thing to note is I have clearly just ignored Victron's like ideal ventilation guidelines and spatial guidelines. This multiplus is supposed to have four inches around it on all sides. And clearly that is not met. From what I understand is within reason, this multiplus, the warmer it gets, the less efficiently it runs. And knowing how I'm gonna be using this in my van, I am totally comfortable with this. Um, the primary purpose of this multiplus is to run my induction cooktop. So it's gonna see you know 10 to 30 minutes of use once in the morning, once in the evening. We never camp really with shore power. We don't use like an air conditioner that needs this to run. So as a result, with just those quick intermittent uses, even if this gets a little warm and um, sees you know a little less efficiency, I am not concerned. And very important caveat, in a customer's van, I would not ignore these spatial guidelines because it is hard to predict the behavior of what someone will do. So for them, I would make sure all those regulations are met. But in my van where I'm comfortable and I know my usage, I am totally happy with this. I've saved a lot of space and it just makes a really nice and compact package that is still serviceable in the unfortunate case you would need to. Talking about overheating, so I do have a little ventilation fan built into this enclosure and essentially this is forcing air into the cabinet. The way this cabinet is built, the only exits out of it are on this far side over here. So when this kicks on, it should just push as much air as it can through that side of the cabinet to try to get some just like ambient cold air air in there. Now, the best way to control these that I found that's really simple is to get one of these tiny little thermal switches. These are really simple. They just cost a few bucks. And essentially anytime the temperature is over 40 degrees Celsius, this thing will close the connection and this fan will kick on. So let me just quickly demonstrate how that works. We have a heat gun. We'll start running that. There we go. And now we are going, you know, once it cools off again, um, it will turn off again. So I guess I'll just cut through that footage as it turns off just to prove it works. Yep, there we go, it turned off. So anyways, that just kind of lives in there. All right, and now I'd like to shift gears 
and talk about something that I would say I'm like mildly neurotic about. Um, I'm somewhere between uh, proud and embarrassed that I jumped through some of the hoops to pull this off. All right, one thing I absolutely always shoot for is to have no wires showing to the customer or in this van to me. I think, you know, there's like those really popular blue C fuse panels, but you can see all the wiring and I just think it can kind of look um, unprofessional, a little tacky. So as you see the components I've chosen here, I've got this master shutoff switch from BEP and their fuse holder. Both of these I've specifically purchased because you can wire them out the back. These blue C breakers, they're also wired from the back. I love that. And then this fuse panel that I'm a huge fan of has a plastic cover on it. It's made by Busman and it essentially is also wired through the back. It does take a little bit of work. You gotta buy these special connectors so you can use it properly. But I just think this looks like a professional installation to me. You're not, you don't have any wires showing. If I accidentally shove a piece of gear against this or my dog touches it, I'm not gonna have them accidentally touch a live connection. All right, and continuing the theme of being neurotic, we're coming back to this wall panel. Now, this lower cabinet, um, as I had mentioned, this is a little potentiometer to control my red, green, and blue lights, and this is one to control my subwoofer level. And both of these arrived to me basically being designed to be mounted in a way where you could see the wire. And that's funny because this was literally the last portion of the van that I needed to modify to have no wires showing anywhere. So a trick I like to do in kind of projects like this is to build these little ABS boxes. I like to use ABS panels. It's plenty strong. Here's one I fucked up. Just a tester so you kind of show you the strength after a couple of days. Let's see. I mean, it's breakable, but Yep. It does better than really thin wood for applications like this because by using ABS cement, it will just dry extremely fast. You can try using super glue, but to me it turns out quite a bit more brittle and sometimes you'll get some like white lines along these seams. By using these ABS panels, I essentially was able to take this thing and I've got these two potentiometers mounted um, inside this plastic case. So this originally, this potentiometer, this one for the music controller, it was originally mounted on this hole here. And you would have had to see this power wire coming into this controller and your LED outputs on this side. There's, here's just some detail of how I went ahead and did that. And as you can see, I've got just a tiny little chunk of friction tape right there to make sure that this wire doesn't abrade through the hole it used to be mounted in. And then I went ahead and kind of goobered this potentiometer up with some liquid electrical tape. So it essentially, I can't accidentally bump a connection to this. That was mostly an issue during installation, but it just kind of helps hold everything together on that. And then this thing, not nearly as bad, this little Alpine controller, but it did have a plastic case on it. And then this plastic, and then this wire coming out of the end. So I essentially took off the plastic case and I ended up wrapping it in a big hunk of heat shrink. And I just think that, you know, when this thing is closed up, it just looks a whole lot better. Yep, a little neurotic, but I just really, that's one of the things I shoot for is to just everywhere in the van have a nice clean finished product, no wires showing, everything lined up nicely. Um, yeah, I think that's those little touches that when someone sees a van like this, it just looks clean and professional instead of, you know, just kind of normal. So I think those little touches really make a difference. Anyways, thanks for enduring this electrical video. Hopefully you got some good ideas and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching everybody.